Hello everyone, welcome to our Audiverse Live show. I'm Binance Live and this is your host Moon Lai from Audiverse. Our program aims to invite builders from different Web3 projects, including funders, engineers, investors, empty artists, musicians, and more. And our guest speaker today is Nicole. She's really, really well known in the Web3 space. And today our topic is going to talk about metaverse trends and with Nicole. So let's welcome Nicole, yeah. And Nicole, could you please introduce yourself to our audience on Binance Live so far? Let me see, we already have, we already have, wow, over 1800 views already. That's amazing. Welcome Nicole, thank you. My room to you. Yeah, um, thank you. Uh, yeah, the, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Nicole. Now I'm a partner of Limpo Innovation Fund. Uh, we brand it like uh, brand it as LIF. So we are a very new Web3 fund. We have invested in 10 projects so far, uh, and it will be a very small fund. We only invest in early stage and uh, uh, incubate projects on the side as well. Um, yeah, so before LIF, I was working with finance and uh, all the first was the project I invested in when I was in finance last year. Um, and so far, I'm very impressed with how Oliver's has evolved to be such a, a high volume, high traffic, and they launched very successfully with uh, the electric sheep, and the NFT looks so awesome. Um, so yeah, this is one of the most projects I've, um, uh, most of pro pro projects I've invested in so far. Um, before Binance, I work in management consulting. I was a practitioner in Deloitte. Uh, I was in the human capital management consulting. I was helping uh, small companies to uh, future proof their business, doing a lot of AI stuff and like set up POC framework, et cetera. And then I was in MA, um, doing institutional MA, more like doing large scale uh, healthcare, real estate, logistics, that kind of process, the projects. Um, well, those kind of projects are so interesting as compared to Webster for sure. Um, personally, I think it's a more, uh, uh, more of a high risk appetite person. So I joined Binance in 2020. Uh, that was really the bottom of the market. I remember back then Bitcoin was um, dropping to, I think, 4,000. And then um, I witnessed a lot of projects, right, really struggling back then. But that was really just before uh, the bull market. And uh, um, when they started in Binance, I think we only invested in about like uh, 50 to 60 projects. Um, by the time we, uh, by the time I left, we have about like uh, 200 projects. Um, yeah, and the AUM when, when that uh, like almost, almost 200 X. Um, so, so that has been a really um, exciting experience for me. And I really see things growing from like almost nothing to such a big empire of like different, um, you know, like uh, web three projects. All the founders are so brainy. Everyone is so innovative. There's so, so many like new um, like developers coming from web two. So, so, so far for me, it's such a, uh, emotional and also exciting journey. So even though now the market condition is not so strong, uh, but I'm full of hope because, um, um, like uh, during my experience in Binance, we know very clearly how to help founders, you know, like at the beginning, you probably are uh, a very early stage project, but help them uh, identify what, what should be the right product um, direction, you know, like they always like keep changing themselves, but uh, like uh, improving themselves, right, they, they become who they are to, like uh, today. Um, like, for example, um, I remember so clearly, right, like uh, during our incubation program, um, I think it was season one, season two, we got projects such as Dune Analytics. Um, their cash flow was not so strong like in bear market. It doesn't matter, right? Like just after um, like a few product updates and they, they got um, invested by Kotu, it's a billion dollar company. There's also Polygon, right? Before that was just Matic. Uh, they were not doing a layer two as well, but right, they, they identify themselves and they become somewhat um, better. So currently I'm actually trying to leverage my previous experience on how to uh, have the product projects, um, you know, build their go-to-market strategy, being innovative, right? A little bit like a consulting work, but this is just the benefits from the investor. I think just because of um, uh, this, this new, um, I was almost like a shortcut of your, 
uh, your uh, like a token um, being circulated um, at much faster speed as compared to traditional equity market, right? Um, investors need to start to uh, add their games. And so as, as investors, we need to think about strategies for our projects and to introduce the right people or right projects to our projects. Yeah. So this is what I do currently and uh, very excited to share more uh, with the audience today. Thank you so much. And once again, warm welcome to Nico. Wow, I can see that already a lot of audience say, yeah, already yeah, cheering for you and they keep posting. Um, hello, Nico, welcome to the live show. We're going to talk about um, more um, towards the metaverse topic. So could you please share your experience um, in Web3 and also talk about several metaverse related projects that you have recently participated in or you are closely watching. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think uh, I think I'm very lucky. Uh, I was with Binance and then uh, I think a lot of the uh, I would say like top projects for metaverse they somehow are related with Binance and starting with X Infinity. Um, so uh, our team was also a team doing Binance Launchpad back then. So Sandbox, X Infinity, they were they were both the projects I worked with before. Um, I went through uh, the time that you know Axie was not that popular, not so famous. That was way before the uh, you know the all play to earn thing becomes so big after the YGG comes up. Or, you know this all like hero story <laughs> bringing people um, like cash flow into the slums of Philippines. That was way before that. So that was the the time that um, I think our team um, just started to explore how it works uh, with play to earn, right? How can you maintain the tokenomics? Um, like we were also in the learning process. I, I think this whole industry is learning as well. Uh, nobody knows what will happen, but I think this experience has been really um, helpful for me. Like these days, right? When I start to um, evaluate a new um, metaverse or this kind of play to earn projects, I, I become more systematic. Um, there are just so many things we need to make sure it's like a whole checklist that the project must fulfill um, before they can actually launch a project. Like for example, this is exactly the thing we actually went through with the Autoverse before. So there's a play to earn game uh, called Endless Loop and the, uh, and the, um, the um, uh, Autoverse ecosystem as well. I think that one will be launched uh, uh, in the later stage after Terminus. But for Endless Loop, right, we were doing so many brainstorming, like we need to create many things. Um, so in my opinion, right, there, the game has to, if you want to have a very sustainable economy within your ecosystem, your metaverse, uh, you need to have a lot of things uh, inside your tokenomics. Um, so that's why um, like you need to have like a really um, imaginative sort of like innovative um, utilities for NFTs. Like NFTs should never be a direct tool to cash out. Um, there are a lot of projects existing, right? And we also saw like how their play to earn token tank very fast because the process of making play to earn token with NFT is way too direct, right? It doesn't give any, it doesn't give user any ownership, right? Like for example, if it, it takes me so much effort to finally upgrade my NFT to a certain level so that I can earn so much token, I wouldn't, you know, like, yes, I'm incentivized to play it, to upgrade my NFT through participating in a game, but I wouldn't sell it so, directly right it wouldn't be at the moment that the play to earn tokens start to be less incentivized i would sell that it wouldn't because I, i'm so invested in the game right like if you play a game like all of us wow this this world is so vivid it's all triple a and real engine 5 um that avatar look exactly like the hot girl i've been dreaming about and there's no way i'm gonna just give up things that i spent so much like the time and emotion sometimes money as well um you know so so the the trick is really you need to make your games fun that's one point but also you have to have a storyline that make people very invested inside this uh, like a metaverse Yes, we call it Matify, and we want to create a very healthy economy where people actually bring in um, like sustainable cash flow inside the ecosystem. But then again, right, we also need to incentivize them to stay in it, right? We need to bring them joy, right? 
So at the end of the day, like when you think about GameFi, um, like I actually share this with a lot of our um, portfolio companies and also like uh, projects that we're evaluating currently. Um, uh, I'm very strong believer that around 5% of the users will be the person who actually sustain the entire economy. But these 5% of users, they are, um, they, they can gain a lot of joy um, they got emotional satisfaction. Um, you know, they they are very invested. They they buy a lot of NFTs. They actually um, bring in, like external capital inside the ecosystem. But the other ninety five percent, they could be like you know students, and they spend so much time in it. They could be students. They're very skillful, uh, or like esports uh, like gamers. They're re- you know they are uh, they're bringing the games to the next level. They are sharing contents and they're building relationships. You know, uh, there could be. Also, like you know, leaders of different gangs, or or the people who who um, inject capital in could also be the leaders of the, the the gangs because you know they feel the ownership in it. So it has to be right. If the play to earn is supposed to work, is that you need to use this whole ecosystem, make the five percent of the people who bring capital in very happy, right? This whole storyline has to work out. Uh, you know, and it has to be have this continuous innovation, like more stories coming in, more, you know, um, like, uh, you know, props, weapons, new avatars, new NFTs, right? And you have like endless, like a new commerce uh, coming in, right? Like, uh, like, for example, if I'm, um, uh, I could be a, like a really wealthy developer, right? I, all I want is some companionship in my way. I like people to play games with me, um, but I'm I'm not so into the real world stuff. I like this, like grand, uh, like a uh, universe, you know, it's like a three body kind of things. And then, and you know, this is where I can find satisfaction. I got really good looking girls, you know, in the metaverse and playing with me. And I feel so sensitive because I'm very skillful and they follow me and they want to learn from me, right? And there are so many people who is like admire me as a hero. Um, I'm very happy to commit cap- capital in because it doesn't, uh, you know, hurt my cash flow so much. And it just, you know, this this will be a more healthy, um, like uh, um, create play to earn sort of economy. So, so um, like uh, back to my point, right? I feel like uh, for for metaverse, for this kind of play to earn uh, economy to work, we need either this kind of really badass triple A games, you know, like Oliver's. Like if you guys have, I actually had a sneak view of uh, Endless Loop, and that was um, that was actually last year. It takes so much time to develop a web uh, like a triple A game. But when I look at the endless loop, right, how they um, uh, tackle the enemy's um, ground, right, you see how the sand is like, you know, so it's like, it's all like a Hollywood movie. It's so delicate. And the um, the cave, you know, the, the clothes, the wind, everything is just so natural. And even uh, I remember so clearly, like, when you assemble a um, machine gun, it takes so many steps, right, because this is how real life is, right? But with so many steps, right, then you will realize, right, if I want to uh, really uh, attack my enemy, I feel the incentive to spend in-game token, right, to expedite the assembling process. And then, right, the economy will start to have a very healthy deflation, right? So so this, all these kind of elements, right, make AAA games very competitive uh, in, in the web three, like, uh, game five regime, right? Um, so this will be like a. I'm I'm actually very excited for endless loop to to launch like later, um, but there will be also the other kind of games, right? They should be um, this kind of games where they are strong in like plotting. They have really good um, screenplay, right? They could be this kind of very cartoonish, uh, cute world, right? It could be a uh, relatively more two dimensional, less vivid, but then it has a very complex story storyline. And then people become invested in that because, you know, um, I I can do a lot of cosplay. Um, I can make friends and I can, you know, do very casual battle with each other, right? And I can do it anywhere. I can be, be on the go with my cell phone and, you know, like 
not not um the world is really big and not every um country have like citizens who who can own really better cell phones that can only um that can really render like very heavy uh video games as well so um so i would say like complexity like interest um interesting uh, screenplay would be um like uh, very crucial um for web3 um like a, a metaverse and play to earn games and also you need to have a very healthy tokenomics um yeah so so like recently um the project i'm working with is this guy um he actually uh built the second kind of category it's not a triple a game but it's a complex game um so we're really much planning on uh, uh the tokenomics currently so again it will be this kind of two token uh, dual token uh, dual token model one is the governance token one is the play to earn token um so the play to earn token we need to go through many process the, pro the initial process we need to do this uh, monte carlo simulation because we have like a really mass audience uh, everybody's decision making is really a random process so monte carlo is the best model uh to to like fit into the scenarios i'm actually from a physics background i'm a physicist i have a phd in quantum physics so this academic stuff is is really my thing um so after the initial like uh, playing uh models and uh, we will do close data like we with the real people coming in and then you'll realize a lot of factors you need to start to fine tune because um people could be uh affected to make different decisions and then um we do a second round of fun fine tuning for the, the the factors of the model and the third round will be we try to encourage five to eight thousand people to join the open beta and then you know you need to do some incentivized open beta uh it'll be quite interesting you guys can follow my twitter and i will show you when the time is up for the for the open beta it'll be a very interesting game as well yeah so and then that will be a time right you really start to uh, finalize your your tokenomics because all you need to do is uh, with real people participating in this game, and you need to project your 10 year inflation to be a well maintained level, it cannot be overly inflated. Um, I'm not going to share what names are, but there are a lot of um, play to earn token, uh, you know, uh, the, the price tank because it's overly inflated. Um, so you need to maintain that inflation rate. Um, now our understanding around 10%, this is benchmarked with a lot of EA games, a lot of like uh, uh, like Blizzard games. And so far those would be quite healthy. Um, so we would use that as a current benchmark, but then again, we leave a lot of the factors um, to the DAO. So in future, the governance token will play a role that um, the DAO members will decide how to fine tune uh, this number. Because I mean, at the end of the day, right, even the Federal Reserve uh, changed the interest rate all the time. Nobody can really predict the future. So you still need to uh, reserve some flexibility in your 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 uh, token model. Um, so so yeah, like uh, my Web3 experience is that, yeah, I care a lot about the storyline, the quality of the game, uh, how interesting it is. Um, you know, it's a playable or not right this is very fundamental and then most importantly i care so much about the tokenomics i want to make sure um everybody have a very healthy sustainable uh tokenomics design brilliant thank you so much wow yeah i i already uh have been following you for a long time and now i even more admire you about yeah all the things that you have done and also amazing you're a phd that's wow <laughs> Just can't stop saying, wow, wow, wow. And next, we would like to um, talk about things we were talking about metaverse, right? So, Nicole, um, for you, what exactly is metaverse? Because I know different person have different opinions, right? We would like to hear from your side. And yeah, please share your personal opinion. What is metaverse? Thank you. Uh, I guess in terms, right? I think that in the short term, um, this is actually a restriction of tech. Uh, exist in a different format um but still we are controlled by our, uh, by our own like uh physical body but i mean in the long term long term view right like because we all saw what elon Musk is doing all the time 
uh, you know, like uh, this whole, whole like uh, downloading your brain into a USD, <laughs> USB, and then like you can exist, uh, you know, in a um, in a electric way, <laughs> you know. Um, I think over the long term, we we do can exist without a phys physical body, right? And the whole metaverse will be as vivid as it can be, right? Uh, it would be like I just exist. I could be existing the um, avatar uh, format, like a uh, board apes. It, I could be anything. Um, yeah, but that's, I would say maybe, you know, 100 years later. Um, but for now, I think Metaverse gave people uh, satisfaction to explore something um, different. And the Metaverse is like uh, this um, whole new generation is trying to imagine the world, you know, because, um, um, you know, this actually become very uh, philosophical because we were all trying to understand why um, decentralization becomes a thing. <laughs> like, uh, um, why this uh, suddenly, you know, because um, Bitcoin was invented a long time ago, but only quite recently, the bull market becomes really bull market. And with so many young generation people coming in, right? They also sort of knew what is Bitcoin before, but nobody is so incentivized. But um, if you talk about metaverse, it kind of makes sense in a way that um, people want to exist in a way that you know, nobody is trying to, you know, educate them something or force them to do something, right? They, they exist in a way where DAO is a governance, not school, teachers, parents, company, that, that that's not the case. And also, we're also thinking, right, like uh, this, um, there are a lot of like people, at least in my generation, uh, we feel like uh, work has been extremely hard. In China, we have this saying that you need to work like 9 and 6, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and six hour, uh, six days per week. Right. And then even though you're working so hard, it's still very difficult to um, uplift yourself. And then suddenly there's Web3 and you create this whole new world where uh, younger generation call the shots. Right. Like mm, like even even Nike. Right. They need to spend capital they need to understand what is Ethereum. Right. And they, they, it took them nine months to to launch NFT. Um, so, so it becomes that the younger generations define the rules. So this can be generalized to metaverse, right? I exist in a different format, right? I can be who I'm supposed to be. And then I call the shots because I'm part of the DAO member. I'm a community member, right? So, so at the end of the day, this is also what we say, like how, how to make a very successful, um, auto, like metaverse projects that like you need to really listen to the community, you build things or let them build the things, right? Into delicate rights, power, and creation, innovation to the community, right? So, so yeah, like uh, um, so far, um, I think all of us gave me this kind of um, uh, like uh, blueprint that, that can already envision that because uh, if you guys saw the demo, um, you go inside, you really feel like this is not the kind of words that, you know, school teacher would <laughs> call the shots or like, uh, uh, you know, like a, a, a company owners, you know, the boss call the shots, not at all. This is really futuristic, right? Like, uh, uh, it's almost like a dystopia. Everything is so perfect and such good quality, right? And you have all this beautiful office and buildings are so awesome. And you check out the nightclub, right? You have this uh, big um, neon light shadows and dance with it. It's just everything is so dystopia. This is exactly kind of the um, uh, the universe you want to exist when you are a little bit, you know, like a little bit fed up with the, the real life, right? You want to change how the world is supposed to be. So I actually always draw this analogy with a lot of friends. It's like, we, we say like when Washington, uh, you know, like a freed up USA and right, like they, they, they create this new um, system, right? It's more than just a law system, financial system, like this new system where people can be more free, right? Um, uh, and then it, it takes a long time, right? US has not always been rich. It takes some time um, for the in innovation to come in because once you change the uh, you know the the relationship between the the you know the capitalists, the the production and the farmers. Once you change that, it takes some time to, for the innovation to come in. I think we're precisely at this at this point where you know we just introduced this uh, you know metaverse concept where community rules the society, right? Like um, you know it takes some time for the community start to 
really understand how we can play around making good innovations inside the metaverse, right? So I, in, but then again, right now we're in a in a society where information is everywhere. You can learn anything anywhere, right? Uh, it wouldn't take two hundred years for, for for us to become like so uh, so powerful. I think within very short time, and maybe just a few years time, you will see people, you know, uh, hey guys, just check out I created uh, something something uh, in my building inside all of us, and uh, you know it's something really awesome um so the people's spirits of innovation will be really um incentivized um to 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 shine right in in metaverse so so yeah um this is just my personal view uh i, I guess i think from a perspective where it's more relevant to my personal experience i'm pretty sure everybody has uh, a lot of like uh, views as well and i'm happy to hear that Thank you so much. Yeah, we definitely yeah like to uh, hear about your viewpoint. This is yeah really um, right now. I certainly agree that we could learn a lot of information right from different sources. And just like today, we have already have over thirty two hundred friends over here watching our live streaming and learn about metaverse with Nicole. And today our topics metaverse trends with Nicole. So next, we're going to talk about what kind of metaverse related products or projects are you more optimistic about that you think is more sustainable and more welcome by the users thank you so much Nicole. yeah um so i think uh this one i sort of share a little bit earlier like i over talk all the time uh yeah so so like for me i care more about the uh the the storyline of the projects and the complexity and then um, the tokenomics. And so basically uh, you need to have more, um, uh, you know, the, the kind of storylines can really make your user believe in and they are invested in the projects and then they will really work hard to upgrade, uh, you know, their levels inside the, the metaverse. And they, they would also, you know, try to bring other people in because this, everything is so awesome, right? And to um, have something, um, some elements to make people invested in. Um, so we see a lot of uh, issues, right? Like, uh, um, it's, it, I shouldn't, you know, directly point out their names, but, you know, we, we know a lot of those kind of projects, you know, um, just because of the simplicity of how it works, you know, it's good and bad. If the product design of a metaverse project or, you know, some, some to earn projects is too, too simple, it's good at the initial stage where it's very easy for you to refer users in, right? The users, you know, pick up the 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 the, the game very easily. They understand how it works. And okay, so if I just purchase this NFT, I can immediately start earning, right? And then I share with my friends, and my friends earning, I can take a cut as well. Um, all this kind of uh, um, like uh, uh, like strategies we've seen so much in crypto world. But then again, if you don't, um, you know, come up with more interesting either storyline or mechanism or this kind of like a um, more complex uh, level up strategies um the token is not gonna stay right it, it, because you, at the end of the day someone needs to pay for this whole economy um like you know either like for people who actually pay for to buy those nft that's actually post another issue a lot of the time right the nft and tokenomics um, the the play and token or the governance token they are not really linked um so that's why you know autoverse is actually a very solid project like uh, um the the revenue coming from the nft sales will flow back to its governance token so this is actually the ethical way of like designing your infrastructure because NFT is so important inside our ecosystem you cannot just give out uh, free tokens right without like uh you know sharing the revenue with the the the, the whole community it doesn't make sense yeah so so actually it shows a lot of issues in this um in the current industry there that include very high line projects like like some some sort of move earn, move to earn projects for example right like uh i would advise the um like the the builders for those kind of move to earn projects right instead of thinking only about how to prevent cheating right you need to start to change your product right like make your product more interesting bring in more social elements right like like when when users go through the initial stage, it start to become a bit boring, right? If earning money doesn't sustain, and they will just sell your NFT, 
But once their relationship kind of uh, sustain inside a project, product, right? Like, like for example, I've met so many friends who really love to run, and then we can only communicate in this uh, like move to earn, or it's better when we commit in this move to earn because, like for example, we could share information where you know other other apps would just delete us, or we could share information which is more like uh, project related, right? We want to. You know, if we are all emotionally invested in a product, we will share information in a group as well. It's very similar to, um, you know, um, like a, a, if you play this kind of like a large scale MMO RPG games, a lot of combination like conversation you have is actually within the game, and you make friends within the game. Similarly, right? If you want the um, metaverse project to to work out, right, it could generalize to any kind of um, access to earn um, that modify whatever. Uh, you just have to, uh, you know, like reward the community is governance token, right? Make people share the revenue because they are the fundamental um, of the whole ecosystem. And also you need to make it interesting, make it incentivizing for them to discuss about it, right? Always innovate your product and make it change. And then people need to spend some time to learn it, right? And so that they don't, you know, I quickly make some money and sell my NFT and end of story. Um, that that would, you know, that wouldn't work. And it's also very costly for the projects because um, these days, you know, a lot of people would do some sort of market making, they'd wash trade. And I think they're super unhealthy for Web3. And we should definitely avoid that because at the end of the day, you just heard like individual users and who believe in your project. Um, so, so yeah, like uh, what kind of project I like, I like, you know, interesting storyline, complex and very ethical, right? Actually reward the community with their, their revenue. Um, and also like projects who, you know, um, uh, like, uh, you, you know, just be very ethical. <laughs> like, uh, Don't trick your users and like uh, be responsible. Yeah. Nice. Thank you so much. Wow. We really, really like your viewpoints and I have receiving lots and lots of feedback, not just um, on our um, Binance site over here, but also from different sources. And, and next, um, we're going to talk about things we were um, talking about your viewpoints and talk about the products and projects related to the metaverse. So what's your viewpoint on seeing a lot of companies or brand names or celebrities entering various type of metaverse projects like um one of my favorite would be disney's they are building metaverse it's kind of like wow the dream come true from childhood so um we would also like to hear from nico what's your personal opinion on this thank you yeah uh first of all i really i applaud to all those uh big corporates like entering the, those kind of brands entering web3 uh because this this means a lot like uh, from from their perspective right that means they're embracing the younger generations um you know like uh opinions and like spirits and then um like for web3 perspective right that means a lot for web3 it means we got recognition uh, right like from very mainstream um companies and these people are already very much well established in web 2 but once they start to embrace community embrace decentralization right it means what we are doing that like our belief actually got echoed by mainstream people i think this is amazing and i really appreciate all those like uh, big copper guys and finally go, go into our world um but then again i really want to um you know kind of remind these kind of corporates when when they start to figure out like nft projects right um like when you launch nft projects or uh um, games or metaverse projects you have to uh, learn the core rather than learn the format, right? It doesn't mean that um, some, some brand you launch an NFT and you don't give us any utility and then us as Web3 um, like uh, citizens, we, we need to just buy it, right? It, it, it's it's um, it's almost wrong. It's like all, almost like you're selling thin air and this is not ethical. I would, I would say, right, like, uh, Yes, we believe in NFT. NFT is just uh, like, you know, it's almost like on-chain certificate, right? The 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 file, all the JPEG pictures are stored in IP, uh, IPFS. Um, you probably have a lot of like uh, 
judge, judgments on, on our Web3 technology, but we are still early stage, right? And there are just so many, you know, decentralized storage are coming, better blockchains are coming. So um, we are still improving, but it doesn't mean that some of those big corporates can just launch some NFT, right? <laughs> just like ERC uh, seven to one contracts and means that we need to pay two e threes on it. It doesn't make sense. You have to give enough rights. It could be real world rights. It could be, you know, like uh, some virtual world rights, right? There are, there are you know, like Google launch, uh, sorry, Gucci launch, like uh, I think uh, e-store on Sandbox already, right? Like, uh, so you need to, um, like enable those NFT projects and you need to sustainably sort of like provide more uh, uh, like uh, utilities out on those NFTs. Otherwise, nobody will pay for it. And I think so far, majority of those celebrity NFT drop doesn't work. Um, I would say 99.9% .9 doesn't work because they feel like this is just a way I sell some NFT and then I make money uh, and be done with it. It doesn't make sense. We need to also advocate this, right? We need to, um, like as Web3 people, we need to advocate this, that um, let's say if you want to uh, embrace your funds through the NFT format, that's totally cool. And we love it. But then you need to give us special rights, right? That's only reserved for this NFT. And then it makes you know, give some fundamentals. That's all we ask for. Um, yeah, that's for one. And the other is I, I would try to um, encourage this um, big corporates to be more creative, right? And there are just so many ways to to innovate. Like for example, recently I think the Tiffany one um is start to get there. Like it's already um a way to um, you know, what they did is that they pick a, a bunch of like uh, crypto punks and then they build a jewelry uh, a, like uh, with that kind of style. So this is almost like a derivative of an NFT, right? This is a regenerating, like reproducing. So I think this is very innovative. They start to go to the very innovative way. Uh, so I would say um, encourage all those big brands and corporates, right? Do this kind of real uh you know like derivatives or like uh, uh like a recreation of nft projects if you if you learn if you uh, like uh, uh, launch your own nft right learn our web series spirit understand what is community what is uh, decentralization right and do more crossovers with different nft projects like for example um you know you could be a pair of Nike shoes, right? And Nike shoes can can make me run faster in Metaverse. It could be endless loop game under Altiverse, right? Um, and I'm happy to purchase that because it makes me a better gamer inside my Metaverse. And at the same time, it looks really good. It's very stylish, right? I think in, in Metaverse, you have this perfect world where anything can happen. Like, like for example, I was actually... Um, and um, trying to encourage like uh, uh, like a Formula One projects to to collaborate with Autoverse as well because Autoverse is triple A built with Unreal Engine Five everything is as real as it can be so imagine all those futuristic cars which are not manufactured yet but then you can just download the like the MCAT the MCAT kind of uh, the three D model inside the Autoverse right and then you can experience right with your VR goggle you you, you feel that. And it kind of encouraged a lot of uh, um, manufacturing as well. Like imagine your product is so popular in Metaverse, it will almost, you, you can almost be sure that it will be popular in real world as well, right? So, um, so it actually create a lot of opportunities for, for those um, big corporates to expedite the R&D process, right? Because they got, they're more incentivized. And then um, more opportunities for them to do tons of crossover. And these days we see fashion brands crossover, but honestly, for, for me, I feel like it's very mechanical. It's not flexible, right? We have DeFi, we have Web3, right? Everything is composable, right? Your NFT can be anywhere, right? And there are so many like permutations you can do for collaboration so so yeah like um uh, yeah i think overall it's a very positive thing for those corporates for those brands to go into web3 and my personal view is i really encourage them to be more innovative and bring more utilities to the nft don't just sell empty stuff to the users yeah Definitely, yes, be creative and sell yeah, a real product, building something real. I don't yeah, just have some empathy promise. I like really, really like that. So, well, I know 
we have been already here for about an hour. So I wanted to let you go. We still have um, one last question. So as an investor in um, for a lot of web three projects and also yeah, helping around, right? And uh, being very strong supporter for uh, Audiverse as well. During this bear market, do you have any suggestions to any project teams or to any builders that what they should do to make their project stronger or to build a better metaverse with real products without just yeah, empty promise, right? How could they achieve this goal? We would like to hear from you, Nico. Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. The, I actually been through this a lot with uh, a lot of projects, and a lot of them become like such crazy projects. These days, you couldn't believe they were struggling back then. Um, so they actually produce uh, like that kind of reflects a lot of uh, the uh, difficulty of the uh, you know the the founders these days. I, I would say like just don't be frustrated. Um, the moment the bull market comes back, everything will be great again. But in the meantime, right during bad market, we all need to be very agile. Like we need to make sure um, our product is really going to the right track and just talk to as many people as you, you can. Of course, like that's based on the, uh, the, the condition that you need to really keep your product development on time, right? Talk to more people, join more like AMAs and join more forums and keep a very open mind because we're in a very open source community and you need to know what the others are doing. Um, sometimes I, you know, a, a good investors like, uh, advice like uh, some other founders like idea right really can uh, encourage you or like kind of uh, inspire you to move to a very interesting direction and it could ultimately lead to a very successful path and also in the meantime right be, be, be careful with the cash flow <laughs> we don't know how long the bull market fire market is going to be and then uh, if there are good like fundraising opportunities really embrace that and then uh, seek help always right like a uh, it could be emotionally, it could be financially, it could be also like a strategically what I'm supposed to. Um, I think um, um, because of the nature of Web3, right, this all new generation, like uh, decentralization stuff, um, the the barrier, or I would say the gap between investors and the projects are, are smaller. I think um, for literally all the portfolio companies I've worked with, and they're really in hundreds, and like there, there are about 200 projects we finance already. Um, so, so I really feel like um, uh, we are closer in a way like you know, there's less formality. We don't care about what board seat or, or uh, like a quarterly <laughs> audit. That's not what we care about. We really care about like in a your personal space, a, a stage, right? Like uh, what does this founder need? What does the team need? What does the project need, right? Like, um, so I think this is good for Web3. People are more down to earth and we're we're closer, like more, more intimate relationship. <laughs> it sounds very bad, but like uh, that's how, how we are. We um we would really encourage um like uh portfolio companies to talk uh with different projects with uh, investors and yeah, and and be careful with the cash flow. <laughs> yeah, that's about that. Thank you so much for the genuine devices. Yeah, and we definitely need to go out and meet with a lot more people, right? Build together and also come join a lot of AMAs and go to different seminars and learn a lot more because there are just so many new things that we wanted to learn. Just like one of our audience, also our winner number four said, right? Right. Stay here because there's so much to learn. And thank you, thank you, Nico, once again for sharing your insights with us so far. We're really, really close to 5,000 views. So, wow, that's amazing. And definitely, yeah, we would like to um, send our big hug, three air to Nico and shout out to Nico. Thank you for spending an hour with us on Binance Live at our Oliver Safe show. So, friends, please give Nico a follow because she, yeah, has been in this um, Web3 space and also focus on metaverse and different projects for a while. And she has shared lots of insights, and important information, and also a big supporter for our Audiverse and Electric Sheep projects. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We cannot say enough thanks to you. And also, yeah, I can keep saying our um, audience also sending more flowers and also lots of likes. Right? Thank you, oh, oh my, 5,000 views. Wow.
You made my day, Nicole. Thank you. Oh, well, that's really impressive. I'm so, well, I'm so glad. Thank you so much for having me. Come back again. Thanks a lot. Yeah, if you would like to talk different topics, not just limited to the metaverse, but we could talk about other, um, maybe like NFTs or different um, new chains, right, that you are um, focusing on that definitely would like to hear and learn from you as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Oliver. Thank you, Moonlight. Thank you, everyone. Yes, yeah, see you all next time.